Setting a new Guinness World Record, that's what a local cardiologist is trying to do. Dr. Tom Nero of Comprehensive Cardiology of Stanford and Greenwich is heading up a challenge to train 10,000 people on how to perform CPR in one day. Doctor, that's quite a goal. And I think, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about it. It's, uh, you know, it's coming up very quickly on August 25th. We're going to try to uh, break the Guinness World Record uh, for training people in hands-only CPR. I mean, it's a, it's a great skill for people to know. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things where we know that if people try to do CPR when it becomes necessary, just trying will double the chances of someone surviving. So that alone, we know that we can make a difference by doing this event. Great. Now, you're an interventional cardiologist. Explain to our viewers what that means. Um, it's someone who puts in angioplasties and stents uh, when someone has a blockage in an artery. But in essence, I'm the guy who rushes in in the middle all the night and opens up someone's artery when they're having a heart attack. And saves their lives. Uh, we try, Will you try we your try best? To, yeah, <laughs> try all right, so let's talk about uh, the event. How'd you come up with this idea? Why breaking the world record? Uh, well, about five years ago, we started doing something called therapeutic hypothermia, which is a, a process where someone, when they come in in cardiac arrest, it helps save the brain uh, metabolically. And we realized that we could double their survival once they've gotten to the hospital. But really, in order to make a big difference, we had to get them alive to the hospital. Right, okay. And right now, only about 25% of people get CPR in the field. And that translates into about a 10% survival rate. And we know that we can get up to 50% of people doing CPR if we teach them how, if we give them the skills and the confidence to do so. so after trying to do small events and little things, we realized that we had to get to the whole community at once. Get the Aim community, big, right? <laughs> get the whole community together to really say as a sort of voice, one voice, this is something we support, this is something that we think you can do. So that when it comes down to it, with that last minute where, you're, where someone's in front of you, you feel comfortable that you can do this, you can do it easily, and that the community is behind you mm -hmm. in doing this. So we hope that truly this one event may even double the utility of CPR in our community within one year. That's impressive. How, um, how do you take part? Do you just show up? Do you need to pre-register? We would like people to pre-register. Uh, they can go to www.handsforlife.org to register. Mm -hmm. They don't have to register to come, though. The registration is just so that we don't have 10,000 people all showing up at noon. Uh, but if someone on Saturday morning decides, boy, I'm having a good time, text their friend, and their friend comes at 1, we'd be happy to have them. So we really want everyone to come. No one should, no one should, uh, should stay away. And I think what's great is that your, uh, your son is taking part in this event, and he's five. So this is for all ages. It's for all ages. Mostly we're training adults. Sure. I mean, really, adults do CPR. Younger kids don't. But we want to give them the confidence that they can. And uh, so, yes, my, my uh, five-year-old son is going to be very excited. He's going to try to train some other five- and six-year-olds that day. Uh, but really, it's for uh, older kids um, and adults, mostly adults, so that they can come feel confident that when, when the event occurs, that they can jump into action and do the right thing. Okay. Now, Doctor, you brought some friends with you here. I brought, I brought our mannequins. <laughs> um, and really, you know, CPR is extremely, extremely easy. But the first thing you need to know is how to identify someone's having a cardiac arrest. Okay. The person's collapsed in front of you. And you don't. You want to see if they're breathing and if they're responsive. Okay. So you're going to shake them real hard. Hey, hey, hey! Are you okay? Are you okay? If they're if they're non-responsive, you want to call 911 immediately because you want to get the the, the real trained professionals, trained professionals there, right? there as quickly as you can. Then you're going to look to see if they're breathing. If they're not breathing, if you don't see the chest rise and fall, you don't hear any um, breaths coming out of the mouth. That's when you're going to start doing CPR. We used to train people to look for a pulse, mm -hmm. but if they don't have a pulse. You're never going to find it. You could look forever. If it's not beating, right? <laughs> exactly. And if they're not breathing, even if they have a pulse, they're soon not going to have one. So you just go directly forward into starting doing compressions. Okay, doctor, no one's breathing here. No one's breathing here. <laughs> no one's breathing. Okay. So you've already called 911. You're okay. getting the professionals on their way. And then what you're going to do is put one hand down right on top of the other. Does it matter left or right? Left or it doesn't matter. Okay. And you're going to put it right on the breast, but right on the hard bone in the middle of your chest, okay. right at the line of the nipples. One hand down on top of the other, and you're just going to push down and fast at about 100 beats a minute to the tune of staying alive. And one, how's that go, two, Doctor? Three, four, staying. You really don't want me singing. I one, got it, though. Two, three, four, staying alive. It's a little And you keep doing minute. this for how long? You're going to do it until emergency, um, until EMTs arrive, okay. or until the patient starts breathing. So every now and then, they'll start breathing for you, they'll start moving again. At that point, you can stop, but normally, you're going to continue going mm -hmm. until the point where someone else comes or until a defibrillator can get here. Okay. Um, we do have a couple of uh, defibrillators here. Uh, this is an extremely important thing. We're seeing them more and more around our community, and this is actually what's going to shock the person's heart back into a normal rhythm. This is a model by uh, Medtronic or Physio Control that uh, we're going to be using that day. Uh, there are other models available. 
Um, and hopefully we're going to be getting into more places, but they're very easy to use. Okay, I know we have one here at News 8, but I, I don't know if I would know how to take it off the wall, Doctor. <laughs> the only thing you need to know how to do is always there's a little green button. They're mandated to have a, a little button that turns them on. As soon as you turn it on, it's going to start talking to you. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Oh. Cut clothing. And so you'll just follow the, follow the directions, which essentially is going to be is going to be taking out these pads, mm -hmm. putting the pads down onto the patient. Okay. There's little pictures on the pads that will show you where to put them. Okay, it's pretty easy then, right? And then it's going to tell you to stop CPR for a moment so it can analyze. And if you need to shock, there'll be a little flashing red button that will tell you where to shock. One of the things that we've done recently um, is we've changed the Good Samaritan Law. Uh, in the state of Connecticut in order to support this kind of training so that people can feel comfortable learning this and performing this without any worry about liability. And so both both compression-only CPR and also the use of defibrillators are now covered. Now I want to ask you, the, uh, when I was in high school, say five years ago, this was kind of different. We were doing, uh, we mouth were mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, yeah. Right, mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. What we realized with mouth-to-mouth -mouth is that the majority of us, myself included, if we came to a situation, we wouldn't do mouth-to-mouth -mouth appropriately. Plus, we also know that a lot of people are afraid of the ick factor. I mean, it's sure. a little bit intimate. I mean, you don't know and you're not sure if you're doing it right. And it puts another huge barrier in between you and saving this person's life. Plus, now that with the compression-only CPR, the research has shown that the outcomes are the same and maybe better really? than doing mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Because when this person collapses, mm -hmm. they have a lung full of oxygen. So you have six to ten minutes in order to continue pump, pumping the blood through the body to keep the brain alive until the defibrillator, uh, until a defibrillator or EMS can arrive. Wow. A lot of good information, doctor. Thank you. And let's break the world record here. Uh, this is Saturday, August 25th from 8 to 6 p.m. at Chelsea Piers in Stanford. We'll have all the information on WTNH.com.